vile or obedient creatures. They are dead to you and me, but alive at God's presence. Poem by Jalaluddin Muhammad Rumi. Here we have a pile of soil dug out by machine or hand. We'll be trying to build a small house out of this earth alone. Building with earth is the simplest yet the most profound way of creating shelter with the world's most abundant natural material. In fact, every human child is born with the ability of molding earth. And it is no wonder that many religions have cast the words human was created from earth as the words of God. We are building a small home called Ecodome with a new technology called Super Adobe or Earth Bag. This new yet ancient technique combines traditional adobe as well as rammed earth and sandbags. In the next few minutes you will see in high speed how this house arises from the earth before you see step by step construction details. This home and super adobe technology is designed and developed by architect Nada Khalili and his associates and students. It is being built by a three-person team who are often joined by other students from all over the world. In this construction, we have trained many men and women of all ages who participated because of its simple and lightweight hands-on techniques. This small sustainable house, which is about 400 square feet or 40 square meters, is designed to use minimum material to create maximum space. This is the way nature builds its flower petals, soap bubbles and seashells, or the way a new technology builds its aeroplanes and spaceships. The Super Adobe method uses long sandbag tubes filled with earth and compacted in layers which are reinforced and connected together by barbed wire. This home utilizes sun and wind energy and is designed to resist extreme environments including windstorms, floods, fire and earthquakes. To draw a circle, we first found a point that is the center point for the compass. So we are trying to have an axis that connects this with the main village here. And then after that, we are developing north-south axis. North-south axis is here. And then from here, we are making 45 degree angle to be the center of these apses. 
the center of these apses, 45 degree, 45 degree angle. So once we have that, we have the center of all of these, then we could start drawing the circle here, then draw the half a circle on each one of these. That would be the center of the compass for each one of them. So we are establishing the center for the main dome, the center for these small apses or niches. Building a natural home by hand is healthy hard work no matter what method you use and super adobe is no exception. You must be ready for the challenge. Building this plan is started with a stake, a measuring tape and a chain. Use white chalk or lime to mark the center lines. Mark the half domes and the main dome using a chain for a compass. And after marking, begin digging the foundations. The plan of this house is like a clover leaf with four petals and a stem. The center dome is the main living room, which is about 15 foot diameter or 5 meters, and each petal can be a bedroom, bathroom, kitchen or entry, while the stem is the wind scoop chimney. Dig out the foundations and compact them well and level as far as possible. In your region, you may find you need a deeper foundation. Here the foundation will be a minimum of two rows of super adobe filled with stabilized earth. Now we are making earth stabilized by cement or lime. One can of earth equals to one full shovel measure. Because we want to do a stabilized earth foundation which does not erode by water, using this can can give us a sure minimum amount of Portland cement or lime cement. For our sandy earth, we use almost 10% Portland cement, which means 10 full shovels of earth to one can of cement. We can mix by hand with a tool such as a shovel or a hoe to first mix it dry. Then we add one to two cans of water and mix to wet it. This could be done by machine using the same mixture resulting in a damp mix. When it is well mixed, we squeeze the earth mixture in our hand. It should hold together but not be muddy or dripping wet like concrete. It must be damp to compact and cure well. We have determined to mix by machine using a plaster mixer or a concrete mixer. We put in 10 earth shovels and one cement can and one to two cans of water depending on how dry the earth is. Long bags come in a roll. Each one of these rolls can build one small dome. The rolls are designed and tested by Cal Earth Institute. We cut the bag to the length we want, for example 10 or 20 feet long or more. Here we use several methods to demonstrate the options to fill the bags. You can use a plastic tube to shorten the length of the bag in this way. Or you can turn the bag inside out to double it and make it shorter or fold it up like your sleeves and you may find even easier ways. Filling the bag with a can, like the coffee can you used for the mix, is small enough for anybody to pick up. Make sure that the start of the bag is packed well with earth. Maybe first fill it up like a column and then lay it down.
use gravity's slope to help you to move the earth into place. Pack the earth well and fold the end under to tuck it under and close. Compact the earth wall by walking over it and tamping. Tamp the bag by hand or by machine. We found that by hand is much faster and less work. From this stage on, we will be tamping not only from the top with a tamper like a plumber's tamper, but all along you will see us use a brick to shape the bag so that it follows the compass closely. Here we have a roll of standard four-point barbed wire, which has two wire strands and four points on the barbs. First we secure the roll in place to open easily which could be fixed like this or mobile in the back of a wheelbarrow. Then we unroll it, straighten it up and cut to fit the length of the bags. To handle the barbed wire you must use gloves and you have to straighten it up so when you cut it, it doesn't snap back at you. Now we use the barbed wire between the layers of bags. We secure the barbed wire in place before we lay the next bag and there are several different ways of doing it. In this case, for each layer of super adobe, we put two strands of barbed wire parallel and four inches apart for the main dome and one strand of barbed wire for smaller domes. Throughout this video you will see different techniques of laying the bags. Here he is using his leg to hold the bag vertical for gravity filling. As he fills and lays the bag he walks backwards. This technique is used to build not only a single building but an entire village. The most important rule in filling the bags is that if you feel it is a heavy weight and labor it means your technique is not right yet and you need more practice. Here is the geometry and concept of the compass for the dome we will be building. You will see here two different size plans. One is larger dome, one is a smaller dome, the section of smaller dome, because we also are trying to demonstrate that it makes no difference how large or small a dome is it will be the same concept. The difference between this, what we are going to build, and what a hemispherical dome is, that in a hemispherical dome, you have a fixed chain in the center that never changes. Around, around horizontally, and the same going vertically. But since we are building a taller dome, in this case, the same chain has to be longer because as we go up, it has to get longer and longer and longer. To know what length will that be in, then we are building a second chain, which is at the outside 
of the dome and uh, it is equal to the diameter from outside to inside of the dome. Now, this change is always going to be fixed because it will decide the height of the dome, which you will see right here. This is the one in the center that changes, and this chain is at the end of the dome, at the diameter length, that never changes. The one that never changes will decide the height of the dome, which is always the same arch. The size of the uh, chain that is at the center will change from the base to the top. As we go, it gets longer and longer and longer. So, at every row, the only thing you need to check is how much do we make this chain longer? To determine that every row or every ring of the, this uh, sandbags or super adobe is this control chain, the one that never changes. So we will come here at every row of the ring, they will meet together and we measure it only one time to determine the size of the ring. For example, here's a ring we will lay with this uh, chain. The next ring we need to make it a little bigger. The next ring we need to make it a little bigger. Ring, a little bigger. Therefore, at every ring this needs to be marked because that ring will be same. To decide what size this will be, then we need this control chain. The control chain is the one that never changes and it touches this chain. Wherever they meet at that ring of the sandbags or super adobe we call the delay, that will be then we drop that one and use this to build. For example, if you are at this point here, to mark how, how, how big this chain, how long this chain will be, we bring that same thing again here. We we'll say, all right, now mark it here. They meet at that same point. Mark it here. They meet at the same point. And then we drop that and mark this and then build that ring with this point all the way around. So at every row, therefore, we only need to change the center chain, make it a little longer. And the length of that depends where this tell us. Here we are setting up all the compasses. First we put a stake for the center compass of each half dome called a niche and for the big dome. Then we measure the length of the control compass which is the one that never changes and makes the height of the niches and the big dome. For the niches, this control compass starts two feet above the floor to give more height inside the small domes. For the big dome, this control compass is just one foot above the floor level. We use a chair caster with the wheel removed and a chain with rings to make the compass. The design of compasses has many variations 
and improving on the design still continues. Here in full size you can see the relationship of the control compass to the center compass on the niche and on the main dome. As we lay each row of super adobe, we must check the curve with the compass to make an accurate dome shape. We check both before and after tamping, since tamping makes the bag expand by about an inch. The strength of the super adobe depends on the tamping, so good tamping is one which presses the earth material tightly into the sides of the bags so that there are almost no wrinkles on the outside edge of the bags. In this dome we put several pipe windows and vents for ventilation and the chimney. We can simply continue the bag over the pipe and later remove the pipe itself to create a simple hole. This one is for the chimney. The small pipes will be used in making countertops and seats. They can be held onto the bags with wire or tape until the next bag is laid on top. They can also be used for attaching shelves and solar panels at any level. Later, short pieces of steel bars will be grouted into these pipes to support a slab of stabilized earth for the seats and countertops and shelves. To build each arch for the entries to the four small domes, we need to make a temporary form with the available materials, wood or steel, or even more sandbags. The form is deep enough to allow the arch to follow the curve of the dome, and we place it at the right level and the right height and level it. Here another useful technique for filling the bag is to pack it tightly by hand. Already we have the foundations and compasses, the walls are going up with large and small pipe holes and some arches are started. At this point we can install the rough frames of the doors which are made of two inch angles of steel or T-section. We want a tight fit to support the frame so the corners of the bags are broken out by chipping or jackhammering while being careful not to damage the main wall material. The sill is placed at the level of the finished floor and the door frame is leveled and temporarily secured in place with wire.
the frame is braced open so that when more bags are laid up to it, these will hold it in place permanently while the frame stays in shape. All the door sills must be at the finished floor slab level. Sometimes we fill some short bags vertically to brace or fill the gaps. To tie the walls together, the bags should overlap with neat joints and barbed wires. To set in the pipe windows, we simply separate the barbed wire and cut out the unwanted earth while it is still wet. We do not cut off the fabric because it can help the earth material inside to dry slowly. We must remember to slope the pipes towards the outside for rainwater drainage. In the same way, we can sculpt the interior wall surfaces as we wish with niches and shelves. For example, we can put ceramic potteries into the walls of the kitchen for storage and put glazed ceramic pouches into the bathroom walls. To make an arch, one way is just to continue ring after ring to the top of the form and beyond. So when you pull out the form, the arch space will be left. In this dome, we want to demonstrate how you can make a super adobe arch with a single bag. Going up is easy, 
but coming down we need to use our body weight or a temporary support. As long as the earth is still fluid and the end is twisted closed, we can place the arch with gravity's help. Then it is tamped and shaped to the compass and allowed to harden. Then we mark the openings for the windows, large enough for the frame and the window. The bags should be clean and nicely finished with details like ends neatly tucked in and cut with scissors. The ends can be packed by hand to stay level and they should be well tamped to a professional finish. With the stabilized earth, we wait a few days for the arch to become bone dry before pulling out the form. If we use unstabilized earth, we must first build at least four rows above the arch. There are many ways to build the formwork and frames for the doors and windows, depending on whether we will need to reuse the form and whether we will install the frames ahead of time or later on. Here the window forms are quite temporary, since we are only building one model house, and we installed the window frames later on. Any materials at hand can help to temporarily hold the form in place while supporting the arch. Under each form, we must put wedges or small pieces of bricks before building the arch so that we can easily remove them later and lower the form to be taken out. Even nails can be used to position a form which is supported with nailed on wooden legs.
should always remember the barbed wires, which overlap by at least two feet when we join two pieces together. The tamping and the compass always shape the bags. bags can be filled with more earth for bigger spaces or less earth for smaller spaces and then tamped to a tight fit. After the arch is built, the bags meet it to close the wall and barbed wire is carried over at every row. For eyebrows over the windows to protect from rain and create shade, we must form the bags side by side, projecting over the form, working from the lower to the upper rings in the dome. This is the most organic way to make an eyebrow, the way a seashell is made. Eyebrows can also be made like the countertops, as an arched slab of stabilized earth attached with pieces of steel bars. When we want to do a straight header over the door frame instead of an arch, we use a temporary support like a piece of wood. Then we build the same bag over it, but before we tamp it, we hammer in two parallel steel reinforcing bars, normally thicker than half an inch or number four steel. These standard steel bars must be long enough to cover the opening plus one foot on each side of the opening. The compass guides every inch of the dome, and no part of this small home is formed without it. Even the straight header above the door must curve with the compass. To make an entry porch, we are laying several arches next to each other to create a small vault or straight entry. These kinds of arches are okay for short spans only.
the bags get overlapped and locked in place with the four-point barbed wire. Because the barbed wire takes up tension, for every row, when we join two sections, we twist them together and overlap by at least two feet. Now the dome is really coming up. When we reach the upper rings of the entry dome, we need to join the circle of the dome to the straight entry vault shape. This is done gradually by stepping in small pieces of bag and by reinforcing with barbed wire so that we slowly meet the compass circle. On these upper rows we must be very careful with the way we build. Experience has shown that the upper rings of a dome must be less in thickness than normal layers so that we can step them inside more and more without danger of the bag falling down. We constantly check with the compass and shape the bags with a brick. We try not to stand on the soft bag which we are building at the top of the dome. At the time of tamping, we must stand below the soft ring at the top and tamp the bag to slope to the outside. This makes stepping in easier and safer and also helps rainwater to stay out of the dome. Now that we are building the upper rings of the main dome, the small buckets of earthen material can be thrown up by hand or a simple pulley can be made out of a bicycle and ropes to lift up larger buckets of earth. Although we start all the rings for all the domes at the same time, the smaller domes will be finished first and can be used as steps to reach and build the taller bigger dome and the wind scoop. The upper bags must be laid very carefully by experienced builders when the superadobe is laid, it must be constantly shaped and tamped in place as we go along, a few feet behind where the bag is being filled. It should be laid parallel to the bag below and then gently pulled in to a shorter ring so that it slowly approaches the line of the compass and does not project too far inside. This way caution is used for the upper bags to be secured in place without the possibility of falling down. As the rings step in, it becomes easier to walk on the lower rings while building. They make natural steps to climb up and down. And small pipe is placed at the top of each dome if needed for ventilation.
During the construction, we can lay the electrical conduits and plumbing pipes horizontally between the layers of super adobe, or we can cut channels for the vertical conduits. These can be attached with tie wire or with screws. Of course, those who are doing the electrical and plumbing work should have the knowledge of how to install these lines for safety and efficiency. The lines must be tested before plastering over them so that we are sure that this electrical and plumbing will work well. Then a stabilized earth plaster will cover all of these conduits. For example, the copper pipe for bringing fresh water must be insulated from the earth to stop corrosion. And the black drainage pipes and vents can be plastered into the dome and concealed. Some of the small domes were completely closed with smaller and smaller super adobe coils. Others were kept open for a small skylight at the top. These rings are made thinner than other rings and it is important to tamp with a slight slope towards the outside. Finally, the wind scoop chimney is the tallest element and will be the last to be finished. Coil after coil, the ecodome grows from the earth on which it is built with few tools and simple materials. As the domes are completed, they become a unity in form and structure, creating maximum space for minimum material. When the structure is completed, then the finishing works of outside waterproofing and stucco is done. Inside plastering and floor slabs can be made with the same stabilized earth material. In these structures, the taste of the occupant will decide the finishes, including doors and windows, designs and painting, contemporary or traditional ways of various regions. With this film 
and the CalEarth Super Adobe Manual, you should be able to build a structure. These are all part of the teachings at CalEarth and learning theory and hands-on safely in the apprenticeship training. The best way to start is to build a smaller dome first before beginning the main project. And the secret to success is only to practice, practice, practice. Soon the work of plastering exterior and interior finishes will be done with stabilized earth. The outside will be plastered and painted with a waterproof material to protect from rain. Clay, asphalt or manufactured waterproof stuccos and sealants can be used depending on the climate. The dome will be plastered and sculpted to bring all rainwater to the ground, away from the building, into the patio drainage to irrigate the trees. Thus a pile of earth is turned into this small house we call Ecodome or Moon Cocoon. Many have already learned how to build this house and many more have seen the transformation of the earth. We have all learned the message of the great mystic poet Jalaluddin Muhammad Rumi, who says, Kameli gar khak girad zar shavad. Earth turns to gold in the hands of the wise. There is an abundance of natural light coming through windows in the thick walls which act as thermal mass and good insulation to keep the home cool in summer and warm in winter. Each niche around the main dome has a different function and orientation. In this dome we chose east-facing windows in the kitchen and bedroom for plenty of morning light. The windows and doors are standard and are fitted to each opening. The seating and countertops can be sculpted into the dome with stabilized earth, such as these cantilevered slabs, or the interior furniture can range from conventional traditional to high-tech combinations of computers 
recessed into earth walls. Even the coils of the dome structure can become the decorative finish for the ceiling, and natural non-toxic finishes such as stabilized earth plaster and milk paint complete the structure in harmony with nature. The south sun is used both for light and winter heating, while the summer sun from the west is shielded. The wind scoop faces the prevailing cooling winds, bringing them into the central dome. Simple earth paint covers the exterior in a golden suede soft finish. Next to the eco-dome, the super adobe coils have also built a village of emergency shelters, continuing its private courtyard into a public plaza for social life. Each emergency shelter is built to United Nations standards for one or two people, all the way to a family of five or more. The entire village is built from the earth which is dug from the courtyard, including all the landscaping, where super adobe coils form a small pool with a fountain, as well as seating, planters, and retaining walls. The village and eco-dome are created from the universal elements of earth, water, air, and fire. And now, experiencing this sustainable architecture are the children who are the builders of the future.